This is The Culinary Life, conversations with scholars, chefs, nutritionists, farmers, and others who recognize that the production and consumption of food, beer, and wine connect us all. Hosted by Dr. A. Werner Absinger, director of the Sekia Institute for Culinary Education at Grand Rapids Community College. So I'm here with Dr. Catherine Mullins. Uh, she is vice president for college advancement at the GRCC Foundation. Thank you for being with us today. How is your afternoon going so far? Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. It's been a whirlwind of an afternoon for sure. And it has been partially because of a fundraiser we are going to be putting on in a couple of weeks. We're just going to talk uh, today with Kathy about her role in making sure there's money available for students to help students afford their education, to bring new programs, right? Absolutely. To fund things like that. So I met you not too long ago, like three weeks ago or four weeks ago, no. right? And, and it seems like we've known each other forever. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no idea what uh, Kathy's job was. So I thought, huh, if I don't have any idea of what Kathy's job is, then maybe a lot of other people don't have any idea either. So today I would like to briefly talk about, you know, what is your job? Mm -hmm. And then because of the nature of our fundraiser, let's talk briefly about how corporations can get involved with GRCC, with SICE, and with you to uh, help the community and college students. Okay. Is that a plan? Absolutely. Great okay. plan. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So let's start with what is your job? My job as the executive director of the GRCC Foundation, my job is to go into the community and raise dollars for scholarships, for professional development for our faculty members, as well as dollars that the college can use to do capital projects here on campus. So the preschool that's being built right now, that was a fundraising project mm -hmm. that went through the foundation. Yeah. Excellent. And then we had a meeting earlier this week uh, where I found out that you have a scholarship for students who are going to be doing what? We have a scholarship for our completer students. Uh -huh, so okay. for SICE students that are in their last semester and ready to graduate, yeah. we have um, dollars available that are available through what we call Promise for the Future, okay. which is a fundraiser that we did for our 100th anniversary. Um, of the college, and we raised a million dollars oh, that awesome. year. And that brings us to another important point and part of your job, right? How do you raise a million dollars? Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> right? it's, it, yep. It's again, it's, it takes a village for sure. Right? Uh -huh. um, but uh, President Ender is very active in our community mm -hmm. and does a wonderful job at raising money. But I also am out in the community raising those dollars. But what really helps us to raise those dollars is Grand Rapids Community College. Grand mm -hmm. Rapids Community College is an institution in our community that without this institution, mm -hmm. our community wouldn't even be the same community that it is today. I mean, we are truly educating the future leaders of, of this community mm -hmm. at Grand Rapids Community and, College. And really many of those future leaders get uh, an education at GRCC and then move on to, you know, more prestige colleges, right? Exactly. They, they will transfer. Um, for sure, we have students that transfer, but we also have students that um, get their associate's degree and will go right out to work mm -hmm. or their certificate and go right out to work. Uh, nationally, we know that community college graduates stay in the community mm -hmm. of the college that they graduated yeah. from. So um, we are very confident that the students that we serve today are the leaders of our community tomorrow. That's excellent. And so another point I want to bring up is, so it will be really hard to raise a million dollars from individuals, oh, right? Absolutely. So there always, corporations always will have a part in this aspect of fundraising. Can you tell us a little bit of why a corporation, or if I had a business, why I would want to get involved with you? Absolutely. Um, what we find in um, the Grand Rapids area in West Michigan is we fill a very important niche, and that's a workforce development mm -hmm. niche. Um, a lot of our employers that come to GRCC looking for employees to fill mm -hmm. jobs that they have open. So we work extensively with employers to to meet those needs. Just like SICE, we had mm -hmm. you have 
are talking with people on a daily basis that right. need students from the program yeah. to work at their restaurants and things. So that's that is the main um, mm. purpose that a lot of corporations will come to us and that they that's why they support us because yeah. they know that we are that bridge. We mm. have the ability to supply them with the students they need, with the educated workforce that they need to mm. fill the openings they yeah. have. And so w with that knowledge or with this understanding, there comes also an understanding that uh, supporting your efforts in raising funds is actually uh, worthwhile community investment. Month, oh, so absolutely. Speak, right? Grand Rapids is actually the second largest philanthropic city in the country, That's only amazing. just just below Salt Lake City. Yeah. Um, so we have a philanthropic culture here, mm -hmm. and um, we do people do understand that an investment into the community is an investment that betters everyone. So mm -hmm. we know that together we are much better than we yeah. could ever be individually. Right. Yeah. And that's something that resonates. That's a when I talk with employers or I talk with individuals in this community, that that is the message that resonates in all mm -hmm. of those conversations. Nice. I want to talk specifically about about an endowment which recently happened through the sale of the football field. Mm -hmm. Right. We don't need to talk about how big the endowment is or whatever, mm -hmm. but let's talk about the specific purpose it is for, mm -hmm. because I think this is, again, really cool about what's happening mm -hmm. through that. Right. With that that particular um, endowment that you're talking about, what it does, what it provides for our students is um, the Spectrum Foundation will be donating every single year $350,000 that will be used that as soon as it's donated, we will start distributing mm. it to students, and it'll be used in its entirety each year mm. in perpetuity. Yeah. That particular dollar amount with what we currently give out in scholarships through the mm. foundation in the 1718 academic year when we we're able to give out that first scholarship from that spectrum funds, the foundation will be awarding one million dollars oh, wow. in scholarships. That's to our incredible. Students. And so through this from conversations we had earlier, I understand that this endowment is specifically for health related fields. It's right? for it's for health related fields, but health related doesn't necessarily have to be nursing. Mm -hmm. um, it could be culinary education yeah. because those students as we as you talk about nutrition and mm -hmm. how culinary works with mm -hmm. that yeah. nutrition and teaching people how to teach yeah. or how to cook healthy, those culinary positions could be in there just as well as IT positions right. and things. So it's it's uh, it'll cover a broad number mm. of areas here yeah. at the college. And and the goal is that any student who is in a field where they later could be working in healthcare, mm -hmm. in other words for Spectrum mm -hmm. or some mm -hmm. other healthcare right. company, um, their tuition will potentially be greatly reduced, even mm -hmm. perhaps maybe Depending on an individual situation, yes, yeah. because this is a needs-based scholarship. Mm -hmm. So we will look at students that um, have a socioeconomic need mm -hmm. first, yeah. and then from there we'll we'll work out the criteria. So those students that need it the most will have the ability mm -hmm. to benefit from the scholarship and potentially could leave mm -hmm. with zero debt. Potentially, yeah. which is fantastic. Really, you Absolutely. can get a two or two and a half year education and go out in the workforce without any student debt. Right. That's that's fantastic. Right. Which brings us to a fundraiser we are doing for mm -hmm. SICE mm -hmm. and where we are trying to do something like that, only a lot less ambitious. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. So you want to talk about our fundraiser sure. we are planning? Sure. Yeah. We have a what we are calling is a relational beverage fundraising dinner uh -huh. that's taking place in here on campus in um, our Psyche Institute for Culinary Education on Friday, October 14th. Uh -huh. As of today, that event is completely sold out. So we have no more tickets right. available, which is phenomenal right. because this is the first of its kind uh -huh. um, with SICE. And, and an important message to uh, perhaps companies who have missed the boat for this event is mm -hmm. that we probably are going to be planning more Absolutely. events like that, right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So with the money we are raising, how, how much money are we looking at, at thus far potentially? At this, at this point, um, I haven't tallied what mm -hmm. came in today, but um, we have have 
about $22,000, 100% scholarship dollars. Which is fantastic because when we talk 100% scholarship dollars through the event we're putting on, so it's going to be a five-course dinner, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be prepared by students. It's mm -hmm. going to be served by students. But there's an interesting twist to the dinner. And yes. you want to tell Absolutely. Yeah. We are, because we are opening our own brew pub here, uh -huh. um, we are highlighting pairings. So we're going right. to pair each of those five courses with wine, beer, and coffee. And, and that's where the relational uh -huh. piece comes. Uh -huh. Because we all know that if we're drinking coffee or if we're drinking a glass of wine or drinking beer, we're doing it with other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the purpose of this. And then yeah. the culminating event for this evening, we will have a panel of experts that I'll explain yeah. to participants, to the guests that are in the audience, about the pairing and how you can pair beer, wine, and coffee with food. Mm -hmm. But um, we're also, there will be, each table will be judging the best pairing of the uh -huh. evening and yeah. then we'll award that at the end of the night. From my understanding, you know, I've been in the business for a couple of years or so. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but it's one one event that I've never seen put on where you pair wine, beer, and coffee. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting, but also the aspect from me going there and to learn about wine, beer, and coffee and how to pair it is pretty fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit about the people who are involved the, mm -hmm. with the event or the mm -hmm. companies who yes. are helping you out? Yes, that, that yeah. event actually was brought to us as an idea by Ferris Coffee. Excellent. Matt brought that in, and um, we were able to work through the process of what the, an event like this would look like and having no idea mm -hmm. what kind of support we would get. And from the time invites hit the mail, we were sold out within three days. So it, That's incredible. it is incredible. So oh. Gordon Foods is helping us out. Um, Founders, Founders is yeah. helping us out. Of course, Ferris and others that are yeah. that are coming in on a daily basis. President Ender, yeah. he sponsored a table right. for yeah, us nice. too. So yeah. people are just yeah. really excited about helping right. our students. And um, the whole point of Ferris bringing this to this event to us mm. is they wanted to see more people in the industry recognizing the quality of education that the students receive at mm -hmm. SICE. Yeah. So that's that yeah. in itself is is a huge compliment right. to yeah. to the SICE program. So I know Dan has been working with Ferris quite a bit on coffee pairings mm -hmm. and they are trying to get that just right. And uh, we also have been talking about wine pairings, but the really cool thing about this event is I think that we plan on serving mostly our own yes, beer. Yes. You want to talk about yes, that? Yes, yep. <laughs> Let's talk um, about it's that. It's my understanding that we'll have four of yeah. our beers that we will yeah. be pairing that night, and then founders will also have their beer yeah. that they'll be pairing um, that night. So it'll be a great opportunity for guests to have a sample and taste the beer that we're making here, mm -hmm. and then have the ability to look at yeah. it in in respect to what Founders right. has been doing for right. for several yeah. years, and you know yeah. the pioneer in that area yeah. in this community. Yeah. So, um, and I think people are going to be yeah. surprised, yeah. delightfully surprised, because oh, yeah. I personally, I was amazed at. The beer just tasted Boy, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah and, and that I think we made here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that's why founders got their table. They mm -hmm. want to see what we are doing. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but for people uh, who or listeners who have absolutely no idea what we are talking about, because it's such a new pr uh, program, we are talking, of course, about Fountain Hill Brewery and the sizes uh, on brewing program, where we actually brew beer, serve it to the public in a brew pub, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yep, we're doing that in a brew pub that we're calling Peter's Pub, which uh -huh. is named after Peter Secchia, yeah. who actually was the um, person who brought this program yeah. and the idea for the program to the college. So, so there's uh, many different aspects to that dinner. So we bring a panel and we bring, uh, obviously, commu uh, community of corporations together. Uh, let's briefly talk about, uh, since this podcast is mainly centered out, uh, around how we create community, mm -hmm. people who produce food and beverages. Mm -hmm. So how does an event like that foster community, bring community together? What, what's your mm -hmm. take on that? Uh, from my perspective, um, I am really excited about this event because it is bringing together the restaurant community and um, the food service community, vendors, um, food service vendors together in a way that I haven't seen happen mm -hmm. in this community before. Um, 
um, in a one-time special mm-hmm. kind of event. Yeah. And, and they're all doing it in support of the students mm-hmm. that we yeah. serve in the SICE program. And I think that in itself is speaks to the fact that um, the individuals that are sponsoring this event and our culinary partners understand the importance of building community and they mm-hmm. understand that GRCC is the place to go where if you mm-hmm. want to start and build yeah. that educated community right. here in Grand Rapids and, and they they value that education mm-hmm. that the students get. Yeah. Me talking to industry professionals, mainly in the hospitality industry, mm-hmm. uh, and it's no news that there is somewhat of a shortage of industry professionals. Mm-hmm. And so people are looking to us to deliver people with appropriate knowledge pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what the community also realizes we're able to do, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so. In terms of workforce development, you know, when we talk about grants, what is a missing piece? Is there something you would like to see happening that you don't see happening just yet? Or is there anything uh, that's really, we are really good at and what we need to do more of? Mm-hmm. I think from my perspective as the executive director at the foundation, I think it's it's exciting to see that people are starting to recognize that the foundation can be a strategic partner with community businesses. Ferris mm-hmm. came to us with this idea for a yeah. fundraiser are understanding that we have the ability to execute the event. Mm-hmm. They can they can do a great job at coming up with the ideas yeah. much more than I can right. and so that they're industry focused, but mm. um, they understand we have the ability to execute it. And in doing that, that partnership together, we're so much better together right. than we ever were individually. Yeah. And in doing that, we are, in essence, just spreading that philanthropic yeah. Um, spirit through the right. community and understanding that yeah. what we do makes a difference in people's lives. And yeah. that, that's what I'd like to see yeah. more people think. If, if you think you have a great idea, bring it to me yeah. and, and, and you. Bring yeah. it to you and, right. and let's yeah. have a conversation. And that's the conversation we've been having lately. It's uh, because when people think fundraiser, mm-hmm. they automatically assume there's got to be 2,000 people involved. Oh, there's sure. got to be $5 million involved. Mm-hmm. And that's not what we're talking about, mm-hmm. really, right? We're, no. You and I are focusing on make them small and intimate and uh, make them really specialized to, you know, 80 people mm-hmm. or 60 Absolutely. people, right? Absolutely. Those unique, one-of-a-kind events are the best kinds of events. And to have them smaller, then you do have the ability to better interact with the people that are there. And there's a personal touch to it that right. you don't get in in your big events. Yeah. There's another event which just uh, Dr. Marcelada Muhammad, mm-hmm. she sent me an email and uh, inquired about if I was interested in doing an intercultural fundraiser, right? And so I thought, hey, Kathy needs to be in this conversation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So Kathy, what are your ideas around that? And can you tell us briefly about what uh, what we're thinking about here? Right. The, the wonderful thing about that is Marcelata is thinking on how does she, she already has a scholarship in the foundation. And so she is thinking about events that she can help um, organize and host that we can capitalize on and raise scholarship, raise dollars for her particular scholarship. Mm-hmm. So her idea of bringing people together around food, people connecting for the purpose of educating other mm-hmm. people is yeah. that's a very unique and it's a it's to me again it's another what? great example of an event that we can do. And any scholarship owner what? could think of some sort what? of an event, but she took the initiative uh-huh. to to yeah. approach you, and um, I think it it's exciting to yeah. think about what it could be. Well, I'm very excited about it because it centers around holiday food, but it centers around holiday food not from only the Christian perspective, but from the Muslim perspective, the African perspective, and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I think if we came up with a five or six course dinner to honor each tradition, it would be a fabulous oh, event, I think. Absolutely. And, and again, I would think that you don't see that many events like that happening in the community, no, right? You certainly do not. And I, yeah. I think that'll be another one that'll it'll sell out pretty fast, I yeah. would imagine, if we decide 
to, to go that road. Yeah. And then we're talking about maybe uh, she's from the English department, right? Mm -hmm. right? So we talk about maybe pairing this event with poetry. Absolutely. Right? And things right. like that. So so really create something, a memorable event people will be talking about, but which will be perhaps a one-in-a-lifetime event. It won't happen Absolutely. again, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And all 100% of those proceeds will go to benefit our GRCC students. Yeah. So I I own a corporation. I come to you and say, okay, I hear about you all the time, and I know you're raising money for GRCC. How do I know my money is spent wisely? The mission, the one and only mission of the Grand Rapids Community College Foundation is scholarships. Yeah. So everything that we do um, when we are fundraising around scholarships, every dollar that is put into a designated scholarship fund goes directly to scholarships. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's a 100% investment. Um, people can endow a scholarship for twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and mm -hmm. and then it's endowed. Endowed means it's here forever. It's mm -hmm. never going away. So can you can you give us an example? So. You mentioned endowed means it lasts forever, but mm -hmm. with twenty-five thousand dollars, how how does that work? Uh, with Good. the GRCC Foundation, whatever the fund balance is in an endowed fund, we give we give out five percent of that fund balance okay. every year. So, in other words, if I give you twenty-five thousand dollars at the end of the year, whatever five five percent, percent of that fund is, that's out. what yeah. is awarded in scholarships. And the the endowment can be. As small as twenty five thousand. It takes twenty five thousand to endow, but we do have scholarships that are not endowed uh -huh. that are what we call annual scholarships. And mm. so someone will say, um, donate ten thousand dollars a year and say, I, I want you to give that ten thousand dollars out, one thousand mm. dollars to ten students this academic yeah. year. And no, it's not an endowed scholarship, but, but the, it's an mm, immediate impact yeah. for our and, students. And then obviously upwards the sky is the limit, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, to remind our listeners, uh, like Kathy just said, our funds raised by Kathy are strictly mm -hmm. to help students with tuition. With scholarship, yep. Yeah. Unless, unless, of course, we're raising capital dollars. But, right, yeah. Um, when we, we're talking scholarship, 100% of those funds go to scholarships. And we all know how expensive education is these days, and I'll be probably paying my students student loans when I'm 90 still. So <laughs> I, I, I know, you know, $500 here, $1,000 there, they go a, far way, uh, a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Kathy, your final word to corporations or somebody listening, who is on the fence of should I, should I not? Mm -hmm. I would say that um, understanding that at GRCC, a $500 scholarship, even a $100 scholarship, could be the difference between a student being able to attend college and not being able to attend at all. You, Your dollar makes a huge mm -hmm. impact, an immediate impact, and if you look at it in $500 increments, your dollar goes a long yeah. way at GRCC. Yeah. And, and that's really incredible, too, because uh, people don't have to have the mindset, wow, it's only $500, exactly. right? Exactly. It makes a huge difference in somebody's life, right? It absolutely does. Life-changing yeah, dollars. Yeah. And so, Kathy, how can people get in touch with you? I am in the GRCC Foundation right here on campus. You're welcome to give me a call, 234-3932, or you can email me. And we have our the foundation website, www.grcc backslash foundation. Kathy, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon and educating me a little bit about what it is that you do. And hopefully our listeners will benefit from my education here too. All right. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate yeah. it. Great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been The Culinary Life, hosted by Dr. A. Werner Absenger, Director of the Secchia Institute for Culinary Education at Grand Rapids Community College. Produced by GRCC Media Technologies. Get to know us better at grcc.edu slash s-i-c-e.